Hey everybody, Mark J. Victor here. If you're not familiar with me, I'm running for the United States Senate in Arizona. I'm running on a third party ticket, the Libertarian Party ticket. And I want to just tell you a little bit about who I am. I'm a proud Marine Corps combat veteran. Also, for the last 28 years, I've been a practicing criminal defense lawyer, somebody who's been thinking outside the box to think creatively about solving problems. I'm also the founder of the Live and Let Live Global Peace Movement. That's right. I've founded a global peace movement. It's based on a couple of different rules. The first rule, just don't infringe on anybody's freedoms. How do you infringe on somebody's freedoms? You aggress against them. That's what you shouldn't be allowed to do. That's why we call it our legal principle. Don't initiate force against anybody. Don't hit people. Don't take their stuff. And don't put them in danger. That's basically the legal principle. And everybody should be held to that standard. We don't care what color skin you have, where you were born, what your ethnicity is, if you're religious or not religious, what holidays you celebrate, who you love. Rule applies to everybody, all groups, all corporations, and the government. No exceptions to that rule. That's the legal principle. Then the second rule is our moral principle. This one's not very confusing either. Just be a good human. What does that mean? Well, we're pushing some aspirational values here. Things like open-mindedness and tolerance and voluntary kindness towards other people and civility, even if we disagree, right? It's okay, let's disagree in agreeable ways. And building high levels of trust with other human beings, being committed to truth and facts, wherever they lead, and rational thought, inferences from the truth and facts. Why do we care about this stuff? Why do we have rule number two? Well, because what we're trying to do here is to optimize human happiness and well-being and minimize suffering. That's a moral rule. And we're not confused in the Live and Let Live movement about the difference between legal rules and moral rules. Legal rules you have to follow, and moral rules you're free to ignore. We're encouraging you in the moral realm here to act certain ways, but you can act however you want, so long as you don't violate rule number one, which is to say, as long as you're not an aggressor, right? So that's, in essence, what the Live and Let Live movement that I founded is about. And it's a global peace movement. I'm very proud of that. I'm offering a different approach to politics with my campaign. And the reason I'm offering that is because I recognize that people feel differently about issues. They have different worldviews. They live differently. And we need to find a way for us to actually get along. I'm not trying to put my personal views into the law, unlike my opponents, which is Blake Masters, who's the Republican, or Mark Kelly, who's the incumbent Democrat. They're trying to boss you around and put their views about how you should live in the law. I'm taking a radically different approach from that. My personal views don't even matter. I'm not trying to put my personal views in the law. What I'm trying to do is take them out of the law, everybody's personal views. So people who live differently and think differently, they don't have to change their mind. They don't have to be forced into living a different way, but so they can live together on the planet and get along. Now, this approach so far is really resonating with people. That's why, in an unprecedented type of way, polls are showing I'm at 15% of the electorate right now, which is really unprecedented in Arizona. I know this message is resonating with people. Now, I'll note my opponent, Blake Masters, when he was asked about that poll showing me at 15%, very quickly said, well, that's fake news. Well, if it's fake news, I'd certainly like to know about it. That means somebody's engaged in a fraud somewhere. And I would like to know what evidence Mr. Masters has to allow him to conclude that that poll was fake news. So I'd ask him to send that over. Because if it is fake news, then I'll stop talking about me being at 15%. But if it's not fake news, and if he doesn't have evidence, this is, again, just more evidence about what's wrong with politics, right? You find something you don't like, like a poll showing Mark Victor at 15%, just call it fake news. You don't need any evidence. You don't need to worry about any of that. Just call it fake news and dismiss it and throw that out there to the public like that's an adequate, rational response. It's not. Send me the evidence that it's fake news and I'll consider it with an open mind. But the reason I'm making this video it's because I've been contacted by two different groups of people. Group number one, people who say, yay, Mark, I'm voting for you. 
In group number two, people who say, Mark, I am not voting for you. I want you to step down or something like that. So first, let me talk about the group of people who says, hey, Mark, I'm voting for you. Well, there are two different groups. They subdivide into two different groups of people who are voting for me. First, there's the group that I refer to as my brothers and sisters. This is the group of people who spent a little bit more time on the Live and Let Live Revolution.com website. They actually maybe reviewed the 30,000 foot overview of the Live and Let Live philosophy, or maybe they watched a speech that I gave. They understand what the message actually is, and it's resonated with them. They've said, you know what? This is a way for reasonable people to actually get along on the planet. These are people who care about freedom and peace and civility and prosperity. That's my group of people right there. And to that group, I'd ask you, help spread the message. What we're doing here is bigger, bigger than just this election, which is big in itself. We're trying to start a revolution in how we think about politics. So you understand the message. I know why you're supporting me. We're on the same team. Let's work together and transcend even this election. No matter what happens with this election, we have got to get to global freedom, peace, and prosperity. To the other subgroup of people supporting me, I don't know why you're supporting me. Some of you just simply like something different, and you can tell that I'm different. I'm bringing integrity and principles and speaking the truth in an election for the United States Senate. Some of you just like that. I could probably be saying anything and you'd support me. Some of you just don't like the other two, and I'm an alternative, and that's why you're supporting me. Some of you like some of the issues that I've put on the Live and Let Live Revolution.com website. You just happen to align with some of the issues. I want to be clear, I thank you for your support, but I'm urging you to do something a little extra. Dig a little bit deeper. Go back to the website. See what I'm actually saying. See how different I am. See how different what it is I'm proposing is from the same old, same old. And support me for the right reasons because what I'm saying is the right thing. So again, thank you for your support. I appreciate that you're voting for me, but do it for the right reasons because you understand the underlying philosophy of live and let live, what it is I'm presenting here. Now to the people who have contacted me and said, Mark, I'm not voting for you. Okay, well, this group also subdivides into two different groups. First, there's the group of people who are essentially saying to me, Mark, I love what you're saying, but you know, look, you're a third party candidate and third party candidates can't win and I'm not gonna waste my vote. And so I will vote for the lesser of two evils like we've been doing, election cycle after election cycle. You know what you get when you vote for the lesser of two evils? You get an evil. If that's the change you're looking for, there's nothing I can offer you here. But I wanna give you something to the wasted vote argument. Don't waste your vote on somebody you don't believe in. If you like what I'm saying, vote for me. Why? Well, because if I can show upwards of 10% in this election, that's gonna motivate me to continue on with this fight. And I'm inclined to change my registration to Republican and run again in two years for the United States Senate against Kirsten Sinema. Now, some of you would say, well, Mark, you're gonna change your registration. That's right. And to be clear, if Kirsten Sinema was a Republican, I'd be changing my registration to Democrat. I have absolutely no loyalty whatsoever to any of the parties. In fact, to the extent anything in any of their platforms differs from anything that I'm saying with the live and let live message, they're wrong. And I'm happy to defend my position. That includes the Libertarian Party platform as well. And I try to stay loyal and faithful to the live and let live message. It's the position I take on every issue. Well, I remain open-minded and people can talk me in or out of things with a rational argument. I'm not gonna mold my position to any party platform. The reason I would change my registration is to avoid the third party issue next time. I also point out, I'm likely to get every libertarian vote. And if I get the Republican nomination, 
likely to get every Republican vote, and judging from the number of people who like Mark Kelly but are instead voting for me or wish they could vote for me or aren't voting for me because they're worried about wasting their vote, I can say with good confidence, I'm going to get a lot of those Democrat votes as well, which basically means I'm likely to win in two years. If you can get me to 10% in this election, you get Mark Victor as a United States Senator in two years. And as you may imagine, I won't be changing my positions. And when I get to the United States Senate, it's on. I'm not confused about my role there either. I'll work on these politicians and see if I can get them to adopt the live and let live position. And I'll do my best to stop some legislation that's anti-live and let live or to help move along legislation that's pro-live and let live. But that's not where change comes from. Change comes from winning the hearts and minds of you guys, the people watching this video, the people in the world. That's where change comes from. That's the change we need. I need more than your vote. I'm trying to get your heart in your mind for revolution in what we're doing, how we relate to each other on the planet. We need a live and let live philosophy so we can get along. You heard me say in the debate, I don't kiss anybody's ring, and I don't intend to start now. And that doesn't matter whether there's an R after my name or a D after my name or an L after my name. I'm not afraid to run as a green either. It won't change my position on anything. I'm a true lone wolf. I do my own thinking, thank you. So to conclude with this group of people, the group of people, hey Mark, I love you, but I don't want to waste my vote. What I'm saying back to you, don't waste your vote. Get me to 10%. Get me in the United States Senate in two years and I'll rock the house there. How am I gonna rock the house? I'll talk to Fox News and tell them what my political positions and my philosophy is. I'll talk to CNN. I'll talk to MSNBC. I'll talk to the Chinese communist. I'll talk to anybody who will listen and I'll say exactly the same thing. My goal is to win hearts and minds. That's how we're gonna get real change. If that's what you want, get me to 10%. Don't waste your vote. Now to the group of people who says, look, Mark, I'm not voting for you because you love Masters or you love Kelly, or at least like them, and that's why you're urging me to step down. And I want to be clear. I hear from both sides on this point. Just yesterday, I got two emails, one from a Blake Masters supporter who basically, in a very hostile kind of way, told me, I better step down so Blake Masters gets elected. And on the heels of that email, I got one from a Mark Kelly supporter who in a very aggressive way said, Mark, you better step down so we don't get Blake Masters. You're taking votes away from Mark Kelly and I don't like it. I want to speak to this group of people. The balance of this video is to this group of people. Look, Mark Kelly's leading right now. He's been in the lead since the beginning. As best I can tell, he's likely to win this election. He has no incentive to do anything. But let me be clear, if something changes and Mark Kelly starts trailing Blake Masters, everything I say in this video is applicable to Mark Kelly as well as Blake Masters. But because Mark Kelly is in the lead, I don't expect him to do anything different. He's just going to ride it out. But to the Blake Masters campaign, I want to say this. Look, you've already contacted me. I've had contact from the Blake Masters campaign. And I've already indicated my position here, which I will now restate directly to Blake Masters' campaign. I remain open-minded to the idea that I should step down and support Blake Masters. In fact, I've already said I'm willing to meet with Blake Masters with an open mind to listen to his argument here. And all he's got to do is convince me that it's in the interests of freedom, peace, and civility for me to step down and endorse him. That's what I care about. For me, it's not necessarily about getting elected to the United States Senate. The whole reason I'm doing this is to get us as a society and as a world moving in the direction of freedom, peace, and civility. Let's have the conversation. In fact, I'd like this to be an open message, and I want to speak directly to Blake Masters. Hey, Blake, look, man, 
we're both trying to improve the world here. You've got some ideas, I've got some ideas. It was nice meeting you at the debate. That's the first time we ever met. We didn't really get to talk there. That wasn't a debate. That was press conferences, 45 seconds. I hardly got to say anything. In fact, you never even acknowledged me during the debate. I think it's high time we sat down and had a real conversation. Thank you for having your campaign reach out to me to discuss these issues. And as I said before, I'm committed to meeting with you with an open mind and having a discussion. I am absolutely willing to hear you out. I want freedom, peace, and prosperity. I think people are craving the message that I'm bringing, the live and let live message, a message of reasonableness, message that allows people with different views to get along, a message in essence that takes our morality out of the law and allows people to live how they want to live. But maybe I'm wrong. I'm happy to listen to what you have to say. So here are my terms to have a discussion. Look, all of our conversations that you and I have, they should be open and transparent. I think that's what people don't like about politics. They don't like backroom deals. They don't like secret conversations. I think transparency and integrity are missing from politics right now. So let's not have any back alley deals. Let's not have any secret conversations. Let's have a conversation with just me and you and a camera person in the room. And let's sit down and talk podcast style, like civilized people talk. Let's have an exchange of views, maybe two or three hours. Let's talk about all the issues in a real way, not with 45 second sound bites, but let's get to the root of our philosophies. Let's get to how we see the government and what the role of government should be, and what we're trying to do and what your vision is for Arizona and for America and for the people of the world, right? America's a leader. Let's have a real exchange of ideas. My goal with this conversation is to have a civilized conversation so people understand fully what I'm saying and what you're saying. I'm happy to meet wherever you like, no problem. You tell me where you want to meet. As long as it's me and you in a room and we have a civilized discussion and it's done podcast style, no editing, we can live stream it out to the internet. In fact, I'll offer to have the meeting at my law firm. I have a professional studio. We can sit as long as we like and have a civilized, respectful conversation. In fact, I would like to understand your views better. And as I've said, if you convince me that you have a plan that's better than what I'm saying for freedom, peace, and civility, and prosperity, I'll step down and endorse you. But I have another idea as well. Even if I'm not convinced that you're a better choice, let's have the conversation, let's send it out to the world, and if my poll numbers go down after that conversation, I'll step down. No problem. If people want you instead of me, I will step down. Now, how are we going to determine this? Let's just take the very first three polls that come out, take the average of that. If there's a minus by my name, in other words, the polls go down, I will immediately step down. No problem. That's how you can get me to step down. Let's just have a conversation in an exchange of views. If I'm convinced that you're better for freedom, peace, and prosperity, I'll step down. If I'm not convinced, but the people are convinced, and my poll numbers go down, I'll step down. What do you got to lose? Isn't this what we both want, to get our ideas out to the public? If your ideas are better than my live and let live message, then that will resonate with the people, no problem. This is actually the best way. If you perceive that I'm taking votes from you, this is the easiest and best and most honest and fair way for you to get those votes back. Let's air our positions and I will act accordingly. All you gotta do is let me know. I'm easy to get a hold of and I'll move heaven and earth to get this conversation set up as quickly as possible. I really do look forward to having a conversation with you and having an exchange of ideas. Maybe your views are wonderful, I don't know, but let's find out, let's get to the bottom of what we're each saying so we each have a better understanding and so the general public, the pool of voters has a good understanding of what we're each saying. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I'm easy to get a hold of. 
certainly reach out. You can call me at my law firm. That's easy. You can email me through my website. Go to liveandletlivevolution.com. I'm all over my emails. In fact, I answer every email that's at least respectful, whether you agree or disagree. Everybody who's emailed me has gotten a response. I'm on top of it. Just tell me, hey, Mark, I saw the video. I'm happy to have the conversation. No problem. Let's sit down and get to the root of where our disagreements are and where our agreements are. And I will compliment you as I did in the debate if we agree on issues. So let's sit down. Let's talk. Shoot me an email. Tell me you're willing to sit and talk. And I'm all over it. Thanks for listening.